how was the tour with Plush and Dinosaur Jr. going? Well, it, <laughs> it actually didn't start for, uh, we don't meet up with them until DC. Oh. So that's um, like we got today's show and then tomorrow's show in New York. Um, and then we meet up with them. So the real tour tour hasn't really started with those guys. It's like a warm up. Uh, yeah, we're just doing three shows here. with this band called uh, Teen Mortgage. And uh, I didn't know about them before this, but they're cool. They're really good. Kind of, I don't know, punk, but garage and like a lot of noise stuff sometimes. They're cool. Yeah. But so yeah, we haven't even really hooked up with the Venture Jr. and Clutch yet. But I'm excited about it because I used to. Way way back, I uh, love Dinosaur Jr. Yeah. So they're they've been a I, I love that. You know, let me turn my phone off. So I take it all the time. I got the first question back. You're going great here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you put out this awesome album, uh, Arrows, and then had a COVID tour delay and yeah. really getting it out there and. Playing it live. And yeah, uh, yeah. We recorded that record actually in 2019, and then everything shut down. And then we finally started touring again. And we're like, should we tour without? Like, I mean, well, actually, when Relapse was like uh, even hesitant to put the album out because we knew we couldn't tour to support it or whatever. Yeah. And uh, then after a while, we were like, well, let's just put it out because I don't, we don't know if we're gonna be able to tour or whatever. So yeah, it was like a long, weird thing of COVID but uh, and then uh, we we did some touring but probably not as much as if COVID didn't happen obviously I don't know if that's always right. but anyway um, but yeah uh, so we're now we're finally kind of finally it feels like we're starting to ramp up again we just did uh, two weeks in South America and that was cool and, uh, and now we're doing this and then we've got a little farther away but we've got um we're going back to europe we're going to play um Wacken, which is a big festival over there in germany yeah we've done Wacken before and it's, it's <laughs> awesome and uh so we're going to do some more touring around that but yeah it's good to, to finally be past covid i know it's not really over but it's at least whatever everybody's pretending it's over i guess i don't know i guess me too yeah it's such a good album Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, I know a lot of people didn't like the uh, production on it. Um, I, I read some people just didn't like how it sounds, but I like how it sounds. Um, and I guess I can hear what they're saying. It does sound maybe a little more sludgy or whatever, but uh, I like that. So, I don't know. I get, but whatever. Yeah. Can't please everybody, I guess. Sludgy's good. Yeah. Yeah, I like sludgy, so... Uh, how did you guys end up with the uh, Wayfinder beer? Oh yeah, it's because, uh, well, they're Portland, and uh, also I think there's some connection um, between Wayfinder and Matt, who um, was part of Relapse. I think maybe he like was part of starting Wayfinder, so there's just that little connection, and plus we like beer. Although, uh, we <laughs> like beer, know. but yeah, I know, I, well, that's what I was going to say, is because, uh, you know, our videos, obviously, we drink a lot of beer and stuff, and we do drink beer, but like right now, um, Brian has quit drinking, and Aaron drinks a little bit, he might have, and me and Aaron kind of like might have a beer or two, and so, and John actually prefers wine, so none of us are really big beer drinkers, but I know that's kind of our persona in the videos. No cases of so PBR. Yeah, I mean, I still like PBR, you know, I like a cheap yellow beer, but uh, we're not as... We used to be, but you know we're getting older, and so uh, the beer is not as much of a thing as it, as, it, as people might think from the videos. You know, it's an exaggeration, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, it was cool working with them, and uh, they have a really cool uh, just their their um, their uh, brewery is in a cool spot. It has a nice outdoor area, and um, they're nice dudes. So yeah. Uh. Yeah, you guys are sort of infamous for your videos. Is there anybody you haven't worked with yet that you just want to work with? As a oh, well, I mean, we really have worked almost almost exclusively with uh, Whitey McConaughey. He's done almost all our videos, except for maybe like one, maybe two, no, maybe just one. Yeah, I think there's only been one video that we didn't do with him. 
and it's awesome working with him. Um, I'm sure there's other directors who are, would be awesome to work with. Um, but Whitey's like a buddy of ours that we've known forever, and uh, he has really good ideas, and he already kind of knows us and like knows like what we're into, and what you know, our sense of humor connects or whatever. So, uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, I mean. I'm sure there's other directors that would be awesome to work with. Like, um, who's the French guy that does all the amazing videos? He did like York videos, and I mean, whatever. That's like a fantasy world. We could never afford to work with that guy. That's the other thing about Whitey is that since he likes us, he. I mean, I wish that Relapse or us could give him more of a budget, but, you know, we're like, we're touring in a band, you know, we're not like, making a ton of money, so it'd be cool to work with, uh, who is that guy that I'm thinking of? He did, he did the Bjork video with the big bounding bear, like, I mean, this was years and years ago. Anyway, he's amazing, but we could never work with a director like that, probably. We could never afford him, unless he, like, took an interest in us and was like, I want to make a video for you guys. Yeah. Which is kind of what happened with Wayne. He just he comes up with these ideas and we're like, that sounds awesome. So, but yeah, the video is really good for us. I think that's what kind of when we were first starting out. Because you know, there's a ton of good bands, but without like something to grab people's attention, good luck. You know. So we got lucky in that one video. Like people thought it was really funny, and and it just kind of it really helped us out. Uh, oh yeah, okay, now I'm remembering. So yeah, someone, sorry, I just was like, I was trying to think of a, you know, we're, I, was, I said that almost all our videos, there have been a few animated videos that weren't done. Uh, so anyway, one was a uh, Hungarian animator and the other was, uh, shoot, I'm forgetting, but, um, but yeah, mostly they've been recorded. Uh, a lot of action videos have been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And they're super fun to make. I mean, we got to drive a car and actually smash into stuff. That was really, it was a little scary, but it was also really fun. It was super cool. Uh, Monty Python, one where you're losing limbs. And yeah, getting, yeah. <laughs> if you did by Larvers. Yeah. Older videos. But yeah, super fun to do. What have you got on your pedal board? Um, I try to keep, I, I love pedals and I have a ton of pedals, um, but for touring I just keep it pretty small. I have my tuner and then I have a Digitech Drop, which is like a, it's a, it's a drop tune pedal but it can handle full chords, polyphonic drop, so you can, you can, like we have a couple songs in drop C. So I'll be actually tuned in drop D, and I just turn it down two steps, and then I'm in drop C. And I can just play it like normal. It's pretty awesome. So I, I use that pedal a lot. I'll use it for some, like for the drop C songs, um, but then sometimes it, you can also just set it to be a normal octave. So I'll just use that. So anyway, tuner, um, uh, uh, drop pedal, and then um, a, a phase 90. It's actually the small version called a phase 95, I think. Yeah, the little mini one. Because I also I just like keeping my stuff small. Then I have a uh, Catlin bread. Um, no, I don't. I have I have an Echo Rack. I, I have that, but um, on the board it's a um, Dispatch Master, which is reverb and delay in one, which is kind of nice. Also, so it's kind of two pedals in one. But it's nice because you can really crank the, the reverb and get a real kind of ghostly sound, or you can have it be just delay. So I use a little combo of both of those. And then the last pedal in there is my um, Mr. Black. Um, it's called uh, Thunderclaw. And that's basically, yeah, it's my distortion. And it's basically always on because um, my amp now, I used to use the Sun Beta. Uh, beta leads, um, and that was all the distortion I needed. But now I'm using, um, for touring anyway, I use a quilter. Um, it's called a Tone Block 200. It's a little, it's tiny, it weighs four pounds. It's like, it's about this big, and um, it's awesome because of that. And you can fit it like in your backpack, and it's 200 watts. And it's really cool, um, but on its own, it doesn't have enough uh, gain distortion to sound really good. So basically, I have the Mr. Black Thunderclaw always on. That's my distortion, basically. And that's it. That's like all I have on the on, on 
the road with me. And then, you know, at home, I'll play around with a lot more pedals. I'll play recording. I'll use a lot of other stuff. I went through a phase of, like, kind of out of control buying pedals. I'd see someone be like, ooh, I gotta try that, you know. But it gets, it gets so expensive, and so I've been just not doing that. But, yeah, I just try to keep it small. I've just got it on a little... Uh, Pedal Train Nano, like the smallest one they make, just those pedals, and every once in a while at practice I'll like hook something else up just to mess around, with. but I always kind of just keep going back to basically just my tuner, the drop pedal, phaser, and then the uh, reverb and delay, and distortion, which just kind of covers all the bases, and you can kind of almost get all the sounds, although I'd love to have one of those... Uh, uh, what is it called? It's um, it's kind of a bigger pedal. I think it's a Earthquaker. Oh, I might have said Calumbred. I meant Earthquaker Dispatch Master. It's not a Calumbred. It's an Earthquaker. Um, but this Earthquaker makes this. It's called a Data Corrupter, and it's just makes crazy sounds. It's like I don't even know what like. That's on my wish list. Yeah, it's really cool. And it's kind of just like out of control. I like pedals that are just make things sound crazy but sometimes they're, they're hard to use you know like in a especially in our kind of stuff which is just kind of rock or heavy rock or whatever so like to just have freak out sounds like sometimes it makes sense but sometimes it doesn't but i'd like those kind of pedals that just are totally freak out there's also the um uh, what's it called um jack white made a version of uh, it's these people in Denver, and I'm forgetting the name, but um, well, now I'm forgetting the name of the pedal, too. Anyway, it's this pedal that's some sort of like an envelope follower, but it's also a distortion that like feeds back on itself. So basically, you turn it on, and it just kind of goes, it just kind of goes off by itself. Like, it's crazy. And then the knobs are like, the knobs are not even, they don't have words on them. One has like a dollar sign, the other one has like a exclamation point like you don't even really know what the knobs are but it's really cool God, what is that thing called uh i'll think of it in a minute yeah I mean, um, there's still snow on the ground i'll be there well, like, i can't think of it anyway but well, yeah that's basically what i have just just five pedals for tour like keep it small especially for like flying and stuff i mean i would love to have a really big pedal board but i just don't want to carry it around yeah. i don't want to haul it around plus the more stuff you have, the more places where like maybe something's gonna go wrong and you're like trying to figure out is it this cable, is it this plug, is it you know, there's like so I just try to keep it pretty simple in touring. So yeah. So you play also obviously if you have pedals and stuff? Yeah, guitar. Nice. Yeah. Have a drum kit too, but haven't played it really so. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to learn how to play drums. I've never really I mean I can like do some real basic stuff, but I've never really spent time playing drums. Is there anything else? Uh, not a whole lot. I was, I was uh, trying to find out more about you guys, but uh, information's a little slim on that. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. We're just, uh, you know, we've been playing for a long time. Uh, me, and John, and Brian. Five um, albums. Yeah. Other yeah, well, and we, and, 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 and the three of us uh, were in other bands before Red Train. But, um, but yeah, this has been our main thing for since like 2005. Other bands before Red Train. Yeah, yeah, we, me and, so, so me and John were in a band called the Mercury Birds. We're both from North Carolina, and so when we lived in North Carolina, we played in this band, the Mercury Birds, and then um, both ended up moving out to Portland. He moved out a little before me and started playing in this band with Brian um, called Party Time, and I moved into the same house that where they lived and practiced in the basement, and then they were like, do you want to be in the band Party Time too? And I was like, yeah, that sounds awesome, because I used to just sit in the basement and listen to them practice. And, uh, and then, so anyway, then I was in that band for a while, and then... Um, and then actually Brian used to have this other band called Last of the Juanitas, which was like a three-piece with him and uh, two other people. And then for one record, they asked me to join the band. So it was a two-guitar thing for a while. But all, and so all that was like before Red Fang. And then, I don't know, stuff happened. Uh, and then we've been just doing Red Fang since like 2005. And it's been good. 
it's worked out. I never thought we would like get to tour as much as we have and stuff. We got to travel like to Iceland and stuff like that, which is cool. But yeah, it's been good. Working for Mastodon. Yeah, yeah, we did a couple tours awesome. with Mastodon, which was great. Yeah, Russian circles. And uh, and I'm yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, for for this Dunster Junior and Clutch uh, tour. It should be really good. So kind of all yeah, I don't think I've seen you guys yet somehow, so... Oh, okay. I've made the three-hour drive down. Yeah, where are, where are you live? Are you from? In a state that everybody goes straight from here to Montreal without stopping in uh, yeah. Massachusetts before that. It's too expensive to live in Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Portland is crazy. Like, uh, we've been talking, me and my wife have been talking for years about trying to buy a house, but housing prices are insane right now like especially if you want to be close to the city I mean you could go way out and it's still crazy but yeah so I don't yeah, before I think the pandemic was a time to buy I guess yeah but, but Portland even even before the pandemic Portland was just it became one of those places like everybody I mean me included wanted to move to so it was super super desirable and whatever yeah just it got crazy expensive and it still is uh, whatever, I still like Portland, even though it's expensive. I guess it's happening everywhere. Yeah, Boston's always been expensive, but <laughs> yeah. it's just worse now. Uh, thanks for your time. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> cool. Um, where can I find this? 